What's up design family and welcome back to another episode of Fit Design TV. So glad to have you back on the channel. On today's episode, I'll be running you guys through my top five daily must haves for the modern fashion designer. Fashion designing as we know it is a historical profession, one that's been done for many, many centuries. But the tools that are available at our fingertips today really are so much different than they've ever been. And as someone working in the field over the last five to six years, I've honestly seen and used a lot of tools that I believe have given me a leg up on the competition, especially those that are more classically inclined. So in today's episode, I'll run you guys through my top five daily must-haves. And though some of them will not come as a surprise to you, some of them will. So make sure to tune in to the end of this episode to find out what all five are and the bonus one at the end of this episode. What's up design family? and welcome to Fit Design TV. So glad to have you here. On this channel, we discuss all things sports fashion, graphic design, manufacturing, and technology. We'll discuss key topics, answer pressing questions, and provide actionable steps on starting your own product line. If you're interested in any of the above topics, stick around. You're in for a good one. Getting right into it, the first tool is honestly going to be a bit of a historical one. It's going to be a double-sided fiberglass tailor tape. So this is a tailor tape that on one side has the centimeters, so it's the kind of the metric measurements, and on the other side has the imperial system, which is based on the inches. This is an eighth scale tailor tape, which means that essentially each inch is denoted in eighths. We've done a separate video in the past that I highly recommend you guys check out that really takes you through how to measure an eighth scale. And honestly, that's one of my favorite videos that I've done because a lot of people get twisted in this process. But why I love this tailor tape? Well, number one, it's fiberglass. It's extremely durable. One is going to last you years. They're very, very cheap. Typically, they'll have these stainless steel or these iron ends to protect them from fraying the edges. And really, it's sort of a tool that you need to have. Why? Well, in general, fashion is going to be extremely fit focused. Anyone who's ever worked in fashion knows that great fitting clothing are going to be far better than any type of clothing that's done out of the highest end fabrics or the most luxurious trims. If something fits poorly, honestly to me, that is not fashion. So fashion is all about fit. It's about making you feel good in your own skin. And in order to do that, you have to have a great fit that flatters you, specifically when it comes to sportswear. Again, fit is going to be everything. Having this on hand, and accessible is just a compact way for me to always be able to take real world measurements and communicate them in real time, whether I'm doing a tech pack, whether I'm speaking with another designer, whether I'm communicating with a factory, just having access to that at all times is invaluable. Number two is sort of a two in one. It's these two books by a company called Fashionary. The first one is called Fashionpedia, again, by Fashionary, and the second one is the Textilepedia by Fashionary. Why are these so important? Well, in general, I think fashion is extremely knowledge-based, really. As you build up your knowledge over time, you become a lot more experienced with different types of textiles, different types of finishings, different types of necklines, hemlines, so on and so forth. And I think fashion is also about communication. It's not only about the artistic endeavor, being able to accurately communicate and to speak about things and to give them the correct namings are so important. This is where Fashionpedia comes into. It's an extremely compact book that goes through pretty much every single A to Z that you can experience in fashion. It looks at different product types, it looks at different neckline types, different hem finishings, different stitches, different fabrics. It's a great introduction to the very surface level mechanics of the fashion world. Yes, you could go much more in depth, but what I love about this is it really gives you the core information. It gives you 99% of the information you'll need in a very surface level way at your fingertips. If you wanna do more research on it or you want to dive deeper into any one of these topics, then you have Google and that's your best friend. But as an on-demand resource, this is absolutely invaluable. The second one, again, is more of an in-depth look at textiles. So where the Fashionpedia does go into textiles, I think, this one does an even better job at giving visual references, showing the differences between different textiles. And as we know, the textile world is absolutely huge. So having a dedicated book that is also within the same form factor as the Fashionpedia is a great addition. Honestly, I cannot recommend both of these books enough. This is not a sponsored post by any means. Really, these are things that I use on a day-to-day -day basis. 
And as anyone that knows me will tell you, really, these, these do not leave my hands. So they're great and I highly recommend them. Number three on our list is going to be this combination of the iPad Pro, the Magic Keyboard, and the Apple Pencil. Why specifically this combination? Well, number one, I really like the compactness of it. I can take it anywhere I want, and as I'm someone that's always on the move, whether I'm traveling or I'm in the office or I'm going in and out of the office, having something that is easy to take with me, easy to carry, is extremely important. And really, when it comes to the modern fashion designer, you're really never going to be stuck in one place. You're always going to be communicating with the outside world, you're going to be moving around, you're going to be traveling, and having a compact workstation is going to be a very, very important resource. Second, when it comes to, let's just say, your fashion artistry. The traditional fashion designer is all about pen and paper. And though I definitely see a value in that, I think the digital world demands a different kind of beast. This combination of the Apple Pencil and the iPad Pro is honestly such a great combination for someone that is looking to create their fashion pieces on the go. We use a program called Procreate and really it makes me a much better designer than I actually am. Just the use of the digital tools that are at my fingertips and the ability to go back and forth, the ability to bring in reference images, the ability to double tap to undo, just so many of these tools that wouldn't be available to me on an analog platform just make me a much better designer. Honestly, I cannot recommend the iPad Pro enough. It's also a great communication tool, whether I'm communicating with a factory, with a client, when I'm communicating with my internal team, just having that ability to hop on a Zoom call or hop on a FaceTime call or even get onto WeChat to, to speak with suppliers is such a great resource and I highly recommend it. This is also where that keyboard comes into play. I've tried different combinations of the iPad Pro. I've tried an iPad Pro without the pencil. I've tried it with the pencil. I've tried the iPad Pro without a keyboard. I've tried it with the keyboard. And honestly, this combination to me is just the most flexible. It has the most amount of bandwidth. And a bonus tip on here is going to be, I have a matte screen protector on the iPad Pro. Why is that? Well, when I'm drawing using the pencil, yes, the Apple Pencil is extremely responsive with a 120 hertz refresh rate. It's such a great tool to use, but I think there's something weird about putting plastic to glass and having the matte protector just gives it a bit more of a paper-like feel. And really, this is the exact same company that I use for the screen protector. It's called Paperlike. Again, this is not a sponsored post, but it is something that I personally use on a day-to-day -day basis. It's a matte screen protector that really makes the drawing experience feel much more natural. You get a lot more grit onto the screen and it just allows you to control the quality and the stroke of your pen much, much better. So I cannot recommend it enough. This combination of the iPad Pro, the Apple Pencil, the keyboard and the matte screen protector is a must have for me. And if you can afford it, definitely go for it. Number four on our list is going to be this color code book. And I'll explain a little bit more about this. This is the color code book. And what is this? Well, most of you have most likely heard of either color or pen tone. What are these kind of two names? Well, they are a physical representation of digital colors. In this world, like the world that we live in, we see everything on screens. But when it comes to our clothing, it's a physical sort of representation. Because we're designing everything digitally, how do we make sure that the color that we design digitally is accurately represented in real life? Well, this is where these standards come into play. Whether you're using Pantone or you're using Colorado, these are sets of standards that are meant to take a digital color and turn it into a physical color. I'll give you a very clear example of color here specifically. We have a ton of different colors that we see and we'll cut to b-rolls of this, but really there's thousands and thousands of colors. And what you can do is you can go onto their online app or on your phone and you can pick a digital color. And depending on the accuracy of your screen and you know how accurate it is in terms of the color representation, you pick the digital code and you can immediately look up that digital code in a physical book. And what that allows you to do, that allows you to pick the digital code, use the RGB to color your, you know, your mock-up or render it out whatever way you want. And then using that digital code, you're able to look it up in the physical booklet and you can ensure that that color is going to look like this in real life. And because you're using a standardized system, you can take that code and communicate it to a factory through your factory ready tech pack. And if you haven't seen how to make a factory ready tech pack and the importance of a tech pack, I highly recommend you check out the 
video that we have on this channel that is invaluable. Also, if you want to learn more about tech packing services, you can check out the link in the description. Our team at Fit Design can definitely help you out if that's something you're interested in. But to get back to the main point, this physical booklet that represents digital colors is a great communication tool and allows you to maintain consistency across your colors and how you're representing them. So definitely check it out, whether you're using Colorado or Pantone, those are the main two standards. We use Colorado here, but you can definitely use Pantone and it's up to you. Last but not least is going to be these physical fabric samples. Why is this important? Again, it comes back to this sort of digital to physical representation. As a modern fashion designer, everything that we're doing is in the digital world. We communicate digitally. We provide or we kind of produce digital assets. We produce digital deliverables. And this is honestly great because it affords us a great level of speed, of flexibility, but we do lose that physical touch. And really we know fashion is all about the fabrics that we use, the textiles that we use. And having the ability to touch and feel fabric honestly will never be something that you don't need. It's always going to be part of that process. How do you know that a garment is going to require fabric XYZ if you can't touch fabric XYZ? See the hand drape, see the weight, see how it performs. Well, this is why at our office, we always make sure that we're always sourcing the best fabric samples. We bring them in and we don't just rely on the composition because two fabrics that are naturally the same composition, you can have two fabrics that are 90 polyester, 10 spandex, but they can feel so much different depending on how they're knitted, what the finishing is like. Even the same exact compositions with the same exact finishes can feel completely different depending on the mill that they're from. So making sure that we retain good contacts with different mills all across the globe and having them consistently ship out their latest and greatest fabric samples to us is invaluable. So we always have a ton of different fabric rolls here that we can basically use at any point. And what is important about having with these fabric rolls is this. You need to know from the supplier the composition. You also need to know the finishing. You need to know the weight. These are all kind of key information. So don't just have them ship you out fabric samples without any information. There's no point in having a fabric roll if you don't know what it is. And at the same time, these companies or these mills should also give you a code because even within the same mill, they can have a fabric and a different fabric that are the exact same compositions, but different products per se. So each one should have a unique code. Make sure that you're getting in these fabric rolls and at the same time, you're bringing them in with their compositions and their actual internal codes. That way, when you're doing a design and you're communicating it, you can use that code to be able to link X to Z. And honestly, this is one of the coolest parts of the process where you're able to take a digital design and to see how it would physically feel and be able to sort of mix and match different fabrics depending on your design. Well guys, that is it. That is a wrap on this episode. Well, hopefully you've enjoyed it and let me know in the comments below which of the tools you guys personally think would be most useful for you guys personally. If you guys think I missed any key tools that you would think a modern fashion designer would need, let me know in the comments below. Also, if you guys want to hop on a one-on-one -on -one consultation call, let's just say you want to start a fashion business or you're trying to start your own journey as a fashion designer, you want to know how to get started, definitely check the link in the description. We can hop on a one-on-one -on -one call We can discuss any topic you'd like within this arena. Guys, thank you so much for tuning into this episode of Fit Design TV. Until next one, stay awesome.